Hello, Christina Garcia here, also known in the online teaching space as Teacher Tina. Now, I know that this has been a really challenging season for a lot of online ESL teachers, particularly teachers who teach with companies based in China. So many of these companies, even the big ones, have been either shutting down or severely changing the way that their classes can be conducted on their platform due to government regulations. Um, so I know a lot of you have been looking into other opportunities and you've been interviewing and wanting to have more of a neutral background. Now I'm not saying this is color neutral what I have here, um, but it is company and country neutral. So I wanted to kind of explain to you how you might go about doing a background like this. I wanted to also give you a classroom tour because if you're changing what you're doing, you might want to change your setup a little bit to keep it simpler. And then I have a confession for you at the end of this video. So I hope that this time of transition for you maybe springs you into something different. I hope it's a really great opportunity for you to try something new. So let's get started. So my background is just made out of paper, believe it or not. So my mom and I made this background. It was very I would say very simple to make, but it definitely took some attention to detail and it took probably a few hours. Um, but here's how we did it. So first of all, I saw this background on Instagram, a similar background from my friend Ariana. I saw it, it was like purple and green and blue and I thought it was just so eye-catching and so much fun that I reached out and I said, hey, would you mind if I do something similar for my background? And she was like, absolutely not, go ahead. So I asked her for some advice and I have some additional advice that I would recommend if you choose to do something similar for your background. Um, so all this is, is paper just paper um, and a very important tip that I would give you um, is try to have somebody help you with it um, it's much much more difficult if you try to do it by yourself um, especially because I recommend a few times in the process bringing in the paper having it behind you and having your webcam up so somebody else can kind of get different angles can help you hold things up so definitely I recommend if at all possible have somebody help you Another big tip I have for you is put a background like this on a big piece of paper so you can move it all at once. Some people have thought that my background is just like these blocks that I put on my wall individually. Um, no, it's one sheet of paper that all has the blocks on it so that I can remove the whole thing if I want to. Um, so all this is is bulletin board paper. So it's white bulletin board paper. You can buy it at any kind of craft store. Um, it's just a big roll. And what I would recommend doing if you choose to do this background or something similar is actually put up the background, like put the bulletin board paper at the height you expect to use it, pull up your webcam in whatever app you plan to teach on. For example, I mostly teach on OutSchool, which uses Zoom. So when I was doing this, I had Zoom pulled up so I could see exactly where things were going to hit. Um, at that point, I recommend drawing like pencil, light pencil marks where the corner of your screen um, would be cut off, right? So like look on Zoom, kind of point to it and then draw with a pencil where the corners are. But beware that if you don't put your computer in the same position or your webcam, uh, the corner would change, obviously. Um, so another tip I have for you is to be sure that your background extends beyond where the corners would be. Um, you don't have to put the background on your entire wall, of course, um, but you definitely want to give yourself some wiggle room in case you kind of move your computer around or something like that. Um, so with the colorful blocks, all I used was cardstock paper. So cardstock paper like this, it was just from Michaels, I think, um, very inexpensive. And my mom helps me cut them into squares. So I just use, I have a, um, one of those cutter board things and I just cut them into squares. Um, then I would recommend that you um, lay them out on the floor, lay them out on the floor, kind of see what they all look like and then just put a single piece of tape on the back of each one, enough that it will stick, bring it into your classroom, hold it up and pull up your app, whatever app you're teaching on, like Zoom for example, and just see how it looks. See how it looks on camera before you actually glue it all together <laughs> okay and then kind of make whatever changes you want to make take it off the wall go to town with that glue stick let it dry a little bit bring it in tape it up 
and that's all that's all there is to it it was pretty simple just took a few hours um, so that is my background now the background would definitely not pop as much if I didn't have good lighting so lighting is very important um, that said I mostly am teaching on OutSchool and on an ESL startup that I'm helping, um, and we don't have as strict of regulations or expectations with the lighting, um, and I've been fine actually for the most part just using my overhead light and my window light. It's been totally fine. Um, that said, it's very rainy today in Pennsylvania, and I wanted to show you what um, where I would position the lights, so I have them today to show you. Um, so I'm going to grab this camera and I'm going to show you what my classroom looks like from a different view. All right, so it's time for a classroom tour. So my classroom is set up in a bedroom of our house. So here, when you open the door, this is what you see. So this is the background that you are used to seeing. I will zoom in more into that in just a minute. Um, but here's an overview. So over here on this wall, I have some personal things, things that make me smile. Um, I have a printer in the dresser. This was my childhood dresser. Um, I have different notebooks, like my notebooks with notes about my students in them. Um, and then there's just some organizational things. And no classroom, in my opinion, is complete without a cat bed. Or a cat. Hi, Avi. <laughs> this is our new cat, Avi. He's very, very sweet. And he loves to be around me in my classroom. So he's a nice coworker. Um, so over here, this is where I would park myself if I don't feel like standing for a class or if I'm just kind of working on something else. I have this desk here, a little, little chair. I can also use my rolly ball if I feel like sitting on that. And then here is what you are used to seeing. So that is my setup with the blue painter's tape around the edge of the paper. Um, let me take you a little closer so you can see a little better what I have here. So this is a really awesome tool. Um, it's a, called a bamboo riser, I believe. I'll share the link in the video, video description. But I really like it because I take notes during my class. So I have my laptop at the top here and then I take notes in the middle and I keep any kind of tools that I want to use at the bottom, like books, for example. Um, over here, I have tissues and water, post-it notes, of course, love post-it notes. And then I have pens, pens, markers, that type of thing. And I have a huge dry erase board there. I often will use little dry erase boards during class as well. So that is my classroom in a nutshell. All right, giving you a slightly different angle here. You can see my laptop peeking out here. You can see my background with the blue tape in the corner of my room. Um, so I wanted to share a product with you that I think is really helpful. I don't get any kind of commission by sharing this with you. This is not sponsored. Um, I just found that it was really nifty for online teaching, especially for me because I've been reading with my students online. So the issue that I was running into was I would try to read with my students and I would kind of be like, trying to figure out if my student could actually see it based on my webcam. Um, if I got it close enough for my student to read it, I couldn't read it and see my screen. So it just kind of caused some, some issues. So anyway, this tool kind of eliminates that problem. It's called Mirror Me This. And let me show you how it works. All right, so again, the problem I was having was I was trying to read with my students but when I had a book, I could no longer see the pages that my student was looking at. So it made it hard to know if I needed to make a correction or that sort of thing. Um, so this tool, Mirror Me This, has been really, really helpful. It essentially works like a periscope. So it's like a document camera, but much less expensive, much easier to use. So you just plop it on top of your webcam and then you can show just by holding it on your keyboard what your student is looking at or your student can see what you're looking at much easier um, especially like let's say you're reading or maybe you're um, using a whiteboard or a notebook and you're trying to show something like you're trying to write for your student super duper helpful so that's just one little product. Um, if you use my link and the code Christina by the end of December 2021, you can get a dollar off. I asked for a discount code for my viewers. Again, I don't get any kind of kickback for it. I just thought this was a useful tool that you might enjoy using. 
All right, so now I told you about my background. I gave you a classroom tour. I guess it's time for my confession. <laughs> so my confession is that there is a product that you did not see in this video that maybe you would expect me to be using as an online teacher. That's a headset. So when I was teaching on the Chinese platforms, I would pretty much always be wearing a headset because otherwise you'd have echoes. If there were any tech issues, you wouldn't have much ground to stand on if you weren't wearing a headset. So I got very used to wearing a headset, but I ended up getting an ear infection like on the outside of my ear, um, probably because I wasn't cleaning my headset as often as I should have been. But either way, I needed to take a break from wearing my headset. And so I stopped and I never started really wearing them the headset again. Um, so for the past year and a half or so, I really have not worn a headset more than two or three times. Um, so I wear a headset if it's really stormy and maybe the audio is not great or if I have to go and, you know, teach from my parents' house or something. Um, so very select few times have I worn a headset in the past year and a half. All that to say, I encourage you, think outside the box, right? So you may be pursuing a new opportunity. Maybe that means you don't need a headset. Maybe that means you want to switch up and make your background more neutral. Um, maybe you want to keep things simpler like I did in my classroom um, and just kind of grab things as needed as opposed to having everything at your disposal all the time. You will figure it out. You will get through this um, and I'm here to help you along the way. So if you have any questions feel free to ask in the comments below you can also send me an email my email and helpful links will be in the video description below um, if you like this video please give me a thumbs up share it with a friend hit subscribe hit that bell so you don't miss any new videos and in the comments below please tell me what would you like to see me make next what would be helpful to you thank you so much and happy teaching bye